Good morning, everyone. So happy that you are here. Go ahead and stand if you're able. We'll start to sing for the Lord today. Take a seat. Yes, take a seat. Let me just show you something here, because it's not only just take a seat. We got two pages, so just get comfy. All right, go get some coffee and cookies, and no, we'll try to get through this as quick as we can. We got a lot going on. 
So first of all, uh, if anybody is new here, welcome to American Lutheran Church. It's good to have you. I'm Pastor Steve, one of the pastors here. Uh, it, for the regular folk, it's time to check in if you got the app ready to go or use the card in front of you. Um, yeah, that's, uh, it, it sure beats that big book they used to pass around. Do you remember? Growing up, this big book would come, big leather-bound book with a pen, and you had to put like a, 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 a a seal, you know, with the candle wax seal and stuff like that. It got crazy, man. So it's better than having to go through all that. All right, now, as far as communion and personal prayer, both of those are available after the service. Prayer over in the corner there, and then communion will be on this side here right after the service. Please take part in that if you, if you would like to. Okay, here's, here's the events. All right, ladies, wow registration is going on this Sunday and next Sunday. So when you get done with service here, head over to the Narthex there and sign up for your classes, all right? So that's, that's going down. This Friday, August 30th, is also uh, is the ALC Youth is hosting Parents' Night Out. All right, let me interpret this for you. Parents, if you have kids, freebie, all right? This is date night, so drop your kids off here at the church from 5 to 9. Okay, they're going to feed your kids. You just have to go out, hit Lazy G's, hit all these places out here, and enjoy a good time out together, okay? So um, that's going on this Friday, 30th of August. All right, uh, September 1st will be the first of the building uh, meetings, and I believe that's after church. September 1st, after the morning services. Yeah, they're going to be discussing uh, this renovation they want to do. So if you want to be a part of that decision-making process, come to that meeting. And then on September 8th is going to be when they throw down the vote for that thing. So you want to participate in this, you know, you want it or not, come and be heard at these events, okay? Okay, uh, September 7th from 9 to 11, that's a Saturday, there will be empowerment prayer training. So come and learn how to uh, pray for people, okay? Exciting. Saturday and Sunday, September 21st and 22nd, uh, we have Pastor Joe Johnson's going to be in town. This is Pastor Mark's uncle, and he's going to be uh, preaching on Sunday. But on Saturday, he's got five sessions open for uh, prayer appointments, he calls that. The best way I could describe this to you is show the video to you. So you ready? All right, hit the video so we could talk to them about this prayer thing. Beloved friends, I'm excited to be with you in September. I'll be with you doing some inner healing prayer appointments and also teaching on inner healing prayer during the weekend. I'm sharing today some information on what that would look like for you, especially for those of you who have not experienced this before. We do simply a simple prayer in the beginning with a positive memory. I'll help you find Jesus in that memory. It would be a memory where you feel joy or love or belonging grateful and in that memory we notice where Jesus is because he is Emmanuel he's with you <laughs> and you can tell Jesus what you're grateful for and then and then I'll help you listen to his response to your gratitude the second memory would be asking Jesus to help you find a memory that's hindering you from living from the heart that Jesus gave you and in that memory we also look for Jesus and tell Jesus what you're feeling and then see what he wants to give you or do for you as you share that with him. At the close of our time together, which is about an hour, and you can bring a friend if you like, uh, I'd like to give a blessing. So I'm gonna do that today for each one of you. I bless you with the Father's love and delight, the joy of the Father's loving you just like you are and how special you are to Jesus. I bless you with that friendship with Jesus where you feel close to him, intimate with him, even more intimacy with Jesus. I bless you with the power of Holy Spirit, your helper, your strengthener, and also another joy giver. See you in September. <laughs> Bye. All right, so that's September 21st and 22nd. Put that on the calendars. There, you'll have more opportunities as this comes closer. So they kind of stacked them in here. All right, and then on the Sunday, September 15th at 4 p.m., 
There will be a class given on how to respond to social and political conversations seminar. All right, yeah, they're going pretty heavy there. They're going to, you know, uh, well, just come. It'll be good. Well, we're in an election season, right? And things are getting crazy out there. This kind of gives you that perspective, uh, understanding from the biblical standpoint. Uh, you know, the two actually blend together. They're supposed to. But how do you do that properly according to the Bible? We've got some insight here for you, and we want to share that with you. So it's all good, folks. Trust me. Just It's not going to get too crazy. And then Pastor Mark is going to be doing on Monday morning, starting on the 23rd of September, uh, it's a video series by Oz Guinness, okay, he's one of those uh, commentators out there, he's studied the social movements throughout history, and he's going to be talking about um, our culture here in, 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 in America, and kind of how he's seen it slipping pretty quickly, so come visit us for that particular series. Uh, Monday mornings at 10 a.m. starting on the 23rd of September. All right, the last thing I promise, folks, I promise. All right, Fall Fun Festival is going to be coming up on the 28th of September. All right, be there at 3 p.m. for Food Fun Family and some crazy get-ups, all right? It's going to be a hoot. All right, please stand, folks, and uh, folks, welcome each other in the name of the Lord, and we'll get going here.
Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't say. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news. Broken dreams and wasted years Until the past to disappear Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus And all the wrong turns that you would Go and undo if you could Who can work it all for your good? Let me tell you about my Jesus He makes a way when there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave the price for all my guilty who would care that much about me let me tell you about my Jesus oh he makes a way when there ain't no way rises up from an empty grave ain't no sinner that he can't say let me tell you about my Jesus is strong and his grace is free and the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me let me tell you about my Jesus and let my Jesus change your life hallelujah 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 amen amen Jesus is there for us and this next song talks about how he is our king to have a king that would just kneel down to wash my feet just give his life away for our for, for us just to give his life away that we will have everlasting life it's a quite a uh, unfathomable thing to do to to lay your life down like that so no other king would kneel to wash my feet lay down his table for his enemies lay down his glory for the least of these 
No other king would touch a leper's skin. Open his arms to let the outcast in. Respond with mercy in the face of sin. Jesus, no one is like you. Jesus, no one beside you. Of this I am convinced, no greater love exists. Appreciate it. Good stuff there, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll get to the notes here. It is so good to have you here today, folks. Thanks for coming through. Uh, it's, a, it's a joy to be in the house of the Lord. That's what I would say. All right. <clears throat> Our scripture passage for today is Matthew 25 verses 1 through 13, and goes as this. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. 
The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us, us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were already who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you don't know the day or the hour. The word of the Lord. All right. Woo, exciting. Another, this is the last in the parable season, uh, series, folks. So be, just be ready for the regular lectionary when you, when you come back next Sunday. I know, I know. It's okay. No, it's actually pretty good. All right, so I have the distinct advantage of uh, being a Generation X person of growing up in the 80s and thus being, uh, having available to me for life lessons in general, 80s movies. All right, this is back before they kept repeating movies again and again. They just came up with unique stuff, right? And also the music to live by during that era. So I think, you know, that was a good, that's a good start. I mean, I would say, yeah, I feel good about my... My, you know, my foundation when it comes to life. Uh, so this led, leads to thus the, the background for this particular parable. Um, back to the Future. Anybody? Anybody? You remember that one? Right? All right Marty McFly. Hello, McFly. All, right, all the good humor that comes out, it's amazing. I mean, we can spend hours just going through it and analyzing it, which we won't do today because it's church. But... <laughs> A lot there, and as you remember, and it kind of it, the reason why this is important and this movie stands out to me and it popped into my head is because in today's parable, there's a, it, it's kind of a when parable, all right? It's a when parable, and we're going to look into that. But to understand that, you have to kind of get the feeling and get into the zone with, with the understanding of Back to the Future. It's kind of a when, right, movie, okay? The whole movie's good because it's, it's given you a good lesson for today's day and age, even now, but it's also giving you some warnings of what not to do out there, okay? So let's look at Marty McFly there. What, what, what kind of goes down in Back to the Future there? Do you, you guys remember? He's out there. His buddy, Doc Brown, I guess, stole a bunch of uranium from some terrorists. You know, I mean, you know, it's, it happens, right? Right? Um, and Marty finds out that uh, Doc Brown has used this uranium to kind of create a very unique device there. And I'm not talking about that huge speaker at the beginning. That would be phenomenal. I would love, Jake, I would love to get a speaker like that. And then we just put on some Van Halen and just rock this entire church building. But it's very spiritual. We have to kind of go with that focus. So, um, No, but yeah, Doc, he goes into inventing some things and he creates a time machine, right? All right, out of a DeLorean. Right? Now, that's the way to do it. That's what my buddies do. We make sure it's a nice car, okay, not some junk, junked up one. And that's Doc Brown even says, yeah, I wanted it. Marty's like, why did you pick a DeLorean? And the doc's like, if you're going to do this, do it with style. So it works and it fits because that's, that's you know, if I'm going back in time, it's going to be nice. And he, what happens? The, the terrorists find Doc Brown. They're a little upset about the whole uranium thing. It's like, whatever, dude. All right. They go chasing it, and Marty gets uh, tossed back into the past. And then the rest of the two-thirds of the movie is his quest and goal to get back to the future. Now, here's the problem and the lesson learned today. If you go back in time, folks, don't touch anything. That's what he did. He went back and he touched stuff, thus messing up the time continuum. And you know how that always works out, right, folks? It always messes things up, and you spend like an hour to two hours trying to fix it back in the past, okay? And you never quite get it right. 
So do not touch anything is key when it comes to the when and practical application for today's day and age, right? If you ever have the opportunity, it could arise. It could arise. Again, don't touch nothing. So we have the, the whole concept comes back to what is the when of the particular passage here? Because this is a passage where when is an actual aspect we have to study. Now, you do understand when we get into kind of scripture passages, we're dealing with the whole scope. Because when we're investigating, we're looking at context. We're looking at what's going on. So we're looking at the past. We're looking at the present because we live in the present. And some of the stuff we're looking forward to the future. Because guess what? I heard a rumor that Jesus is coming again. All right? So... You can see how this all plays out. And this particular passage has heavy emphasis with the second coming. So, is this passage in and of itself simply just an old, out-of-date cultural reference to a wedding? No, it uses a wedding as the analogy to show us the, the, the future and aspects of the present. It's phenomenal. I love it how Jesus did it. And this wedding would have been a common thing that happened. Actually, in those days, weddings were pretty cool because it was kind of a spectacular thing. You realize they didn't have cool stuff back then, right? They didn't have, like, you know, cool cars, Jeeps. They didn't have cool music, you know. Uh, they didn't have, like, Super Bowl and stuff like that. You just did life, right? You went along and you, you farmed and you took care of the goats. That's it. That's it. So a wedding comes, it's like, boo, yeah, this is cool. It's going to be a big impact. I'm really making fun of them, I know, but I mean, there's probably more to do than just goats and stuff. But, uh, you know, it, to us, we look back like, man, I don't see, they didn't really do anything back then, but hey, it's all good. So we're talking about a wedding today. Then people may say, well, you know, Pastor, this passage is about the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's about the end times. It's pretty clear. Yes, I will give you that. There is some language in here, and, some, and it does talk about issues of the end times. That's very important as well. But what we want to really look at when we look at any passage is its value to us today. Right? I mean, you don't want to leave here with just a history lesson. You really don't. Or like, you know, kind of get all spooked out with the second coming, all right? You want to leave here with something in your heart, something you can take out there and actually use today. And hopefully we'll give you that. I believe this passage definitely will give you that. All right. So, yes, Jewish wedding and the analogy. Now, contextually, this particular parable falls into Matthew in what is called the Olivet discourse, meaning Jesus is on the Mount of Olives, and he's preaching down a good sermon, okay? And it's not just a sermon that's like 10 minutes. It's a sermon where as he moves through the town, it's like a series. He'll continue on with the subject as the disciples and people follow him. So the Olivet Discourse is the sermon that Jesus gives about the end of days, his return, the judgment, and how believers and disciples should conduct themselves while waiting for all of this to come about. Because as you notice, there's been a lot of times about the end times, and it's, uh, has it happened yet? Anybody? Did we miss it? I don't think we missed it, right? Does anybody know when it's coming? Any close ideas? Anybody want to take a stab at it? You know, maybe 2025, October, October 7, 2025? Well, we're not supposed to do that, and we can't do that. That's the problem. Because we see in this discourse that Jesus gives to us, which the parable of the ten version falls into, he says this as well. But concerning the day and the hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect Think about how awesome that statement is first and foremost. The son, Jesus himself, doesn't even know. And yet he's God. He's part of the Trinity, right? Even he doesn't know when he's supposed to come back and do it. They're going to be sitting there playing some computer game and God's going to be like, son, do it now. And he's going, now? It's the time? Do it. 
He doesn't know the time, okay? So I think that, that speaks to us also because I know a lot of people that want to try to guess the time, right? Anybody, everybody's got that friend, right? They're always in, in some book. They got the charts written up, and they look at you, and they say, all right, according to the charts and the Bible, it's going to be next Thursday at noon. And you're looking at them like you're trying to be nice because they're your friend. You're like, oh, yeah, okay. You're kind of nodding, but at the same time, you're backing up, you know, to, to leave. All right, it's, it's kind of that thing that goes down, folks. All right, so we don't know. So this, is a, this serves as a good warning. Since we don't know, stop being consumed with it, I believe. We'll get into that because I, this is important. All right, so we have the discourse. All right, so we have an end of times focus here. But what again does it mean to us today? The parable itself. What are the two characters, technically the two characters in the parable? Well, there's the virgins, right? The ten virgins represents humanity. The Jesus is the bridegroom that will one day return. And let me tell you about what the two, establish the two characters here. Let me tell you a little bit about Jewish weddings. All right, we're not going to go into great detail here because these things are huge. These weddings were big, okay? They lasted a long time. You'd need a whole sermon series to do it. So in Jesus' day, weddings were very elaborate affairs. You just didn't duck into the justice of the peace and get, you know, signed off, here's your paper, go have a good life, right? 30 minutes at the most. Or your church wedding, an hour at the most. You know, we sign off, I do, I do, kiss the bride, right? It wasn't like that back in those days. You're looking at a celebration that lasted anywhere from one to two weeks. Folks, if you were invited to a two-week wedding, boo, yeah, right? It's paid for. It's an open bar. You see what I'm saying? This is what you're going into back then. I mean, the poor father who had to pay for this. I mean, yeah, yeah, it, was, it probably was horrible. But as far as the people attending, a phenomenal experience. All right, so, uh, so two weeks. Uh, it was a rather relaxed affair with no set time for the groom to go down and fetch the bride. That's why we have the, the parable. That's why the wording in the parable is like, we don't know when he's coming. Just sit here and wait because there was no agenda. The groom went and got the bride when he was ready to do it. You see what I'm getting at? So you can kind of understand why they simply had to sit there and be ready for the procession to take place. The role of the virgins in this case was to be the escort for the bride and groom back to the groom's house for the wedding banquet itself. Um, and then once they got back to the, uh, the groom's house, the door was shut and there was no longer access to the wedding. You get there in time, you're in. You come late, you're out of luck. You're out of luck. So can you kind of see how five of our characters today who were unwise got themselves in a bad situation? Because the bridegroom came, the wise ones had enough oil to keep the lamps going and light the pathway, but the other five had to go off and try to find some oil. Now, I hate to tell you this. Back in those days, they didn't have Maverick on the corner. All right? They didn't have 7-Eleven, 24-7 stores. You had to wait for the, the oil merchant to wake up in the morning and sell you some oil. So they're off trying to find oil for their lamps. The bridegroom comes. The other five, they all go together to the banquet. And then when they finally buy oil and catch up with the group, the door's locked shut. And do we, are they let in? Like, ah, yeah, you can come in, but you have to sit at the kids' tables, right? No. What was, the fra what was the phrasing here? Later, the others came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. The door is slammed. <laughs> the wedding banquet is the end times for being with Christ in eternity, all right? Ouch, do you see the, the implications here? The virgins that were not ready and had to go look for oil 
came back and were told by God, I do not know you. Let it sink in, folks. See, in this particular situation, we want to identify with the wise virgins. Anybody one of the foolish ones? Anybody? Well, that was like two people in the last service. Yeah, this boggled my mind. All right. Wise virgins and foolish virgins. So the foolish virgins, with no oil, didn't just miss out on the meal. They missed the entire week of the, the entire celebration. Gone, done, they've missed it. Not only that, they're cast out. Jesus wants, and this is kind of like the bottom line, the, what, we're, what we're looking at here, Jesus wants his disciples back then and now to be ready, to be spiritually prepared during the wait for his return. That make sense? And it's, it's, it's simple. There's a little bit more to it, though. That's the problem. All right. So the parable illustrates what it means to be ready and what it actually looks like to not be ready. Now, there's two realities we face as Christians that we can uh, apply this parable to. Uh, two realities that we face as we go through life, as we walk down the, the journey, right, over the hills, into, into the valleys, over the mountains. As we're on the spiritual journey, these things pop up and are kind of sometimes hurdles for us. So the second, the, the se second coming, the end times. Y'all hear about that stuff? Have you studied that stuff? Have you gotten into it? You know, you know, it's just this little time before, you know, the destruction of the world. You know, it's, 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 you know, it's nothing, nothing to be worried about. No, what is it? You read Revelation. What, what does the end time say? I mean, there's, I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, I don't know, horrible. I mean, you got like comets coming down onto the earth, smashing in the earth. I mean, basic, you know, overall picture is Thunderdome is what I see. I see you're sitting there, all right, that's Thunderdome time, let's go. Let's fight, out, fight our way out of this. But no, it is really uh, this, this, this struggle between Satan and, and God. It's the, it's the last battle. Uh, the problem is there's a danger to us Christians when we sit there and get too involved with the end times. See, we can look at the end times, we can study it, but what happens in our lives is we get consumed with the end times. And then we lose track of our life here on earth in our regular daily activities. I mean, there are people who sit there with their charts and everything, and they look and, 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 and they decide, well, the end times is coming, so as a Christian, I'm just going to kind of do nothing and just wait for God to come, right? I mean, he's supposed to... That's the wrong answer. When we get consumed with it, we lose track of what we're supposed to do. We are actually... Yeah, and it's a good thing to know about the end times, but again, when that's all you think about, eat, sleep, or drink, I mean, I got people who, you know, you go into their house and they got lists of current political candidates, you know, and reasons why from the Bible why this one's the Antichrist or this one's the Antichrist. And it's like, I think you're going a little too far here, okay? That's not what we're supposed to be involved with as far as, you know, we know. See, here's the reality of the end times. These, this is what's going to happen. It's going to happen, all right? It's going to be pretty horrible when it does happen, right? But in the end, in the very last three chapters of Revelation, I know you're not supposed to read the book, you know, the end before the, the rest of it, but uh, we win. Jesus wins. So if we get all caught up and get consumed with this, you don't have to worry. We win in the end. Now, we may have to go through it. Yes, I know that's not going to be fun, but we have Jesus with us, right? The whole way with us. When he's with us, who can be against us? Nobody can really stand against us, folks. So that's positive. So just be careful there. The other thing we have to understand um, in human psychology that we go through is what is called the arc of history. Track this. Not an arc, but, you know, like the arc, Noah's arc. The arc. <laughs> uh, the arc of history shows us that people in general move away from righteous living proper worship and reverence of him as time goes, okay? Remember, we're here waiting for Jesus to come. And as we wait, we fall into this ark, this possibility that the more time goes by that we don't pay attention to our spiritual life, we don't be ready, right? We slowly kind of drift down the slope. It's kind of like if you, uh, 
if you work out, right? You do a lot of lifting, running, you get in shape. What happens if you said, so, said one day, I'm just going to ignore working out for the next year. I'll be fine. Nothing will happen. What could go wrong, right? After a year, you're going to find yourself very much out of shape, right? Because it's kind of entropy. You just drifted away from this norm that you once had in your life. So the arc of history shows us throughout time, spiritually, we tend to decline because of our sinful nature. A good example is Israel. Go back and read the Old Testament. How many times was Israel spot on? No, maybe like once were they spot on. But every time God bailed them out of something, they came back in repentance, they always eventually fell away from God again. We too, as Christians, uh, can, can be threatened with that type of thing in our lives to where we slowly fall away. Even people who love the Lord can succumb to temptation, get distracted, and, or simply just forget God's plans for their life as time goes on. So to remedy that, we have this perfect parable here. Be ready. Be ready. Have oil, folks, right? right? And I think, you know, I think you want to look at kind of probably the 30 weights the best out there. I'm going to be straight up with you here. No, someone asked me that after, after the last one. What weight is that oil? All right, doesn't matter, folks. The whole oil of the Holy Spirit is perfection, all right? So, as a church body here today, as the, as the 1030 service of ALC's Contemporary Side, are you ready? Do you have oil? Do you? Okay, what is oil? A good example. What is oil? Folks, do you have the Word of God in your life? You, you taking time to read the Bible? It's that book. 66 books is in the back. If you don't have a Bible, take one on the way out, folks, all right? On us. <laughs> Do you have the Word of God? Do you have a saving faith? Are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Well, if you have those things right there, you're already on your way to being ready or at least moving in that direction. That's for sure. All right. Now, remember... We had in the parable, five of the virgins were ready. The other five, however, were not. And when we look at their lives, you can kind of classify these as the people, the Christians who um, lack maybe depth in their relationship with God. They're more in it for the feel-good aspect, for the perks that come, right? The perks, you know about the perks, right? I mean, being blessed, you know, well, health and welfare, right? All that stuff, no. <laughs> Depending on who you no, depending on who you watch on TV, be careful out there. All right, uh, we know that the the Christian walk is a challenging one. It's not always easy. There will be troubles in life. Get ready, hunker down. Here's the beautiful thing: if you're truly following God, He's going to get you through it. He's going to get you through it. What happens with the people who don't have oil is they're so shallow. When the problems come, they get they eventually get found out. They realize they're lacking, and usually they walk away from the faith or have a very uh, low, low view of God in, in, in their lives. And so you can tell, okay? You'll know them by their fruit, folks. Okay. So his people must remain ready. All right, so that means being prepared uh, for whatever contingency arises in our life. And I would say... Being prepared means keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus at all times while we eagerly await his coming. Uh, see, when he finally does come, it's not, it, it is not the time to make things right approach to this. A lot of people live their lives thinking, well, I can live whatever life I want to, right? I can go out and have all sorts of fun, and then when I know it's about time to come or Jesus is coming, I'll get down on my knees and I'll ask for free. Have you ever heard that? I have literally heard people talk that way. And it's like, dude, that's playing with fire there. You, you, you may not make it in. That's dangerous to play it that way. I'll just wait to the very end, and then I'll, I'll settle things up with the Lord, Lord then. Yeah, you want to be the wise virgin in this case. So, five wise, take their faith seriously. The five foolish, 
just going through the motions, no depth to their walk with God, shallow faith, uh, enjoy the benefits of the Christian community without true love for Jesus Christ. See, the goal here in this parable, in case you haven't noticed, is to be part of the wise virgins. All right? Everybody got it? Again, if you want to be part of the foolish, we'll talk a little later here. You know, Jake, I'll need your help on that one. Uh, what really stands out about this is the ending to me. The Lord, Lord, and I do not know you. Because we know God's graceful, right? And he is. He really is. But there, let's face it, the word, the Bible speaks again and again and again of the reality that not everyone is going to make it. That should concern you as a Christian. I, that spooks me big time, especially when I was growing up. It spooked me. I didn't want to be that person who was just screwing up with the faith. I wanted to be the person that was tracking 100% with God because I wanted to stand before God and I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Not like, who the heck are you, right? Could you imagine? Uh, who are you? Um, the <laughs> it's God asking this question. Wow. Think of that impact. Matthew 7, 21 through 23 says this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name cast out demons. And in your name perform many miracles. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who, are, who practice lawlessness. Now the actual application here can be found in 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 2, comma 11. Thessalonians, the Thessalonians, when Paul was writing to them, were actually, he writes to them, uh, actually on the very topic we're talking about. They were questioning what they were supposed to do in light of the end times coming. So they were saying, hey, Paul, you know, you started the church here. What, I mean, should we kind of just get ready for Jesus to come? Should we hunker down? Should we like, you know, sell all of our land and all of our, our possessions? Because why do we need it? Jesus is coming again. Should we just sit in the church and sing praises to him all day long and read the Bible? And, and Paul's like, you know, uh, here's the solution right here. So he tells them this. So this is 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 2, comma, 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Therefore, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. So as we're waiting here on planet Earth for God to come back eventually, what are we to do? Yeah, we're not supposed to sit there and just be lumps on the log, right? We're not supposed to, we are supposed to engage our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. What I would say we're supposed to do is, especially knowing this parable now, Make sure your buddy next to you, make sure your fellow brother and sister next to you has oil. You see what I'm saying? Talk to each other. Make sure people are tracking with Christ. Make sure they're growing deeper. Invite them to the Bible studies. See, I want, I want to have, to be honest with you, I, I, I'm planning on packing a backpack full of oil here, folks, all right? I'm going to be out there handing it out like, like there's no tomorrow, but making sure the people know Follow God with all your heart, mind, and soul, right? A good way of also looking at it is the law that Jesus gave us. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what we're supposed to do out here, folks. And then hopefully some of that will rub off as a good Christian person, and you'll remember this little thing Jesus told us to do, right? Make disciples of all mankind. So sit there and say, you know what? I'm going to make sure at least on my watch, that I get everybody I can into the banquet as well. Everybody I can come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Because it's pretty cheesy if you just let people go to hell, right? I mean, it's pretty cheesy. It really is, man. It's like, well, you're one of those people. Let, some, let people go to hell. No, you shouldn't be like that. 
You should be, I'm getting everybody I can into the kingdom of God. That's the way to do it, folks. That's the way we should do it. So, folks, when you go out there this week, this month, this year, be light. Be salt to the world around you. Proclaim the kingdom. Have your oil full, folks, and be ready. Amen. Amen. Casey, take it away. So if you can and you're able, go ahead and stand right now. Um, we are so blessed that we have a beautiful cross over here on my left, your right. Um, and if you felt led during this next song just to go and bow down on your knees and give the Lord everything you've got, pour it out. But just make sure when you leave that cross, you don't take it back. You give it to him and you leave it there. Also, we have prayer warriors that will pray for you. We have Miss Becky and Jenny's going to come up. If you want prayer, please, that is their honor to pray for you. They'd love to pray for you. Savior, I come, quiet my soul.
right, church, let's do this. May the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.